Just try to get in the car. Let's slam it into the car. Oh, they taped it. It's still swollen, but, and I can't twist it. So my, my daughter rocked. I had a hard time washing my oh, hair. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I think um, I would put a warm washcloth on it and let it soak that glue. I'm just going to leave it on until it falls off. Until it falls off. That's a good idea. Crystal, you want to put it Very good idea. Oh, okay. Can you set that down? Can I take your place? No, I put you there. Yes. You're good. Because you've got this to get up and down, and I've been using it too. Anyone who wants me to sit down, please come sit up. I need a hug. Thank you, family and friends. Our program, we're going to have a family prayer offered by Cody Blackett, the grandson. We'll have open tribute, or I'm sorry, afterwards we'll have uh, Ryan Corbett, a grandson, uh, offer comments. Are you going to be singing a song as well? Uh, I guess so. Okay, and he'll be singing a song I think that he, he wrote. Okay, then we're going to have the mic available for anyone who feels uh, that they have a message they'd like to offer. And then I will uh, dedicate the grave. And that will be the, the end of the service at that point. You can linger uh, a little bit afterwards. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with a prayer. Our Father in Heaven, we gather here today to honor the life of Luana Cox Colburn Moore. Father, we'd like to ask you to soften everybody's heart at this time. That we're here to, for Luana. please let the Spirit be here with us. Please comfort everybody and comfort Luana. Let her know that we all love her and miss her. We're so grateful that we had her in our lives, the great example that she was and the long-lasting expression that she will leave in our hearts. Father, we pray today that we are always 
remember her and that we can always think of the positive that she was in our lives and how we have the opportunity to return home with her. Father, please be with us throughout this time. Please be with us as we travel home and that we can do so in safety. We say these things humbly in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This means I'm just the one you all know talks a lot or <laughs> what. Um, got a lot on my mind. <clears throat> it's been a rough year, but one of the coolest things as I thought about Moana, my grandma. Um, we talked about this last night, a couple of us. We were blessed with unique circumstances. A lot of us are close. We've been able to have friendships with cousins and second cousins and people that a lot of people don't interact with in their lives. <clears throat> and a lot of that comes, of course, from Grandma Vivian and then <clears throat> Grandma Luana, Uncle Sherwin, Uncle Gary, and Karen all carrying that on for us and really fostering this sense of family. Uh, Loana's been there since day one for me and she's, of all the things, she's always been an example of love. No matter how hard life was, no matter what she was going through, whether you were her sibling, her child, grandchild, niece, nephew, even my friends, she loved you. She loved to see you. There was no doubt. <clears throat> and last Thanksgiving we were here, I remember sitting down next to her, holding her hand and I was, <laughs> it sucked because I had to tell her who I was. But even though she couldn't remember, even though a sickness had taken that memory, she still knew she loved me. The way she looked at me, the way she held my hand, the way she looked at everyone there, she still knew she loved us. Even if she couldn't remember quite who we were. And. <clears throat> Whether it's divine, whether it's what, whatever you take to your heart, whatever you believe in this life, that spoke to me, that love. The love that connects us, the love that brings us together, friends, family, that's eternal. That's the thing that carries through. So today, <clears throat> God. <laughs> I know we're here, we're here kind of heavy hearts. Um, I kind of have to paraphrase, or uh, I have to do metaphors. <laughs> the way I see it, it's, it's like all of us have been dropped into a thick, dark kind of forest. We don't know which way is north, south, east, or west, and it's scary. And a lot of us... We just want to get out. We want to get out of that forest. But we don't we don't know which direction to go. We don't know which way takes us back to safety. And the thing that's helped me is thinking about my grandma. Thinking about Vivian. Thinking about Uncle Sherwin. Thinking about all of you. The things that we have gone through together that kind of lightens that wilderness that takes us 
to a place of safety. And the fact that we're all here together, you know, we are all hurting together. Um, I'm one of those, you could call it I wallow. I have playlists of songs that I always say they kind of make me hurt a little bit more. <laughs> and uh, I don't, I don't really see that as a negative. We all know the music that we were raised with, the, the talent in our matriarchs and our patriarchs. I lean on that. When I'm struggling, that's right where I go. Um, I remember when my dad got burned, part of the process to heal was you have to debreed that skin. You have to take away the damage and it can hurt, but it allows it to grow healthy and strong. And for me, that's kind of what I had to do is I sat down and listened to music and then I just started writing. Um, and I cried, I cried a lot, <laughs> but I think the best, the best way forward, the best way that we continue to be an example of Luana's love and to honor who she was to us is to carry forward those memories, create more memories with each other. You know, it's heartbreaking that we're here on these circumstances, but we're all here. We can all reach out, we can touch each other right now and say, I love you. I miss you. I'm sorry if I've upset you. And we can go forward and and, and carry on that message of love that we, I'm, I, I know everyone here has that. Everyone here felt how much Luana loved them. Everyone here felt how much Vivian loved them. And that passes on in one day I look at all I look at my kids I look at your kids the people who grew up running around with me on the lot your kids and they're gonna have kids and we just keep pushing that love further and further and that's that's who we are the Coburn the Cox the Moore the bunting family we're a family of love I love all of you I, I hope you all know that I love you We've not always had the same ideologies. We've not always had the same likes and dislikes. But I love you. I do. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to relay some words from a song. Um, not mine. I'll get to that, I hope. Um, when Pretty much every time I'm in this position of loss, um, I found the song, it was by a, a band called We Three, their siblings, and they wrote a song when they lost their mother. And I've, again, wallowed listening to this song, thinking about Roy and Mike and Carol and my mom. And this song, it's, it's a message from the mother to the child. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say the verse. Um, but it says, no, honey, I don't want to go. Just know that I have to. My sickness has grown. I think it's time I go home. Yes, I can still hear, hear your voice. It feels just like, or it sounds just like it did. And I can still feel your hand as it touches my skin. But heaven's not too far away. I know someday you'll visit. And I didn't think it'd go this way. Can I please have one more minute? I gave you life, now you have to watch it leave my eyes. But heaven's not too far away, and I know someday you'll visit. I, I know that's what Lawana believed, <laughs> and I know that you don't have to do that. You can visit her every day. Visit her in songs, visit her in memories, visit her in the joy that you feel with your children because that's what she was. She loved her grandchildren. 
If any of you saw that video last night, that's all we could get <laughs> was pictures of her holding grandchildren, standing next to her children, loving her family. That's who she was. So <clears throat> after I spent the day when I found out, I buried myself in work, I buried myself at the gym, I got home and it all crashed into me and I'm glad it did because I think, I won't say I think, I know Luana was there. She was sitting beside me. And as crazy as it sounds, she was sitting beside you guys last night. She was there. Um, so I sat down and I wrote this song. And I don't know how to explain other than I think it came from her. So now that i've completely like stuffed my nose up we'll see if i can do this um it's on the back of the program and it's obviously it's about our time at the lot it's about grandma vivian it's about us because that's who we are that's who luana is luana is us so i couldn't put together a guitar part my hands are going out on me in old age but I'll just uh, screech. <clears throat> we got back off too. Okay. Oh, little boy, blue, tell me what you're gonna do. You've got a heavy heart and a lot on your mind ever since you settled down and had a few kids. Yeah, that damn full time job is taking all of your time. So you packed your car. And headed down south to a place that you know you'll never let down. It might be some trees, a little bit of land, but it's home. <clears throat> oh, singing songs about Nyquil and that strawberry roam. Oh, they were just two kids, probably drunk in love, who had a few kids. Sometimes they were rough, but they started this out. Yeah, we can figure this out. Some dearest friends, they come from my blood. We used to run around in circles and get in the mud. But we've all grown up, moved out on our own. No, this was always our home. Singing songs about not quail and that strawberry roam. Hey, I was just singing songs about not quail and that strawberry roam. Oh, who would have seen eventually those kids would have kids and finally see. The home that we built in our grandmother's name It holds tight to our hearts It'll never be changed Singing satin sheets Check yes or no Till the day that I die This will always be home Singing songs about Nyquil And that strawberry roll we're just singing songs about Nyquil and that strawberry roll. Anyway, <laughs> um, I I know that music was still is a huge part of my life. Most of you know if I'm talking, I'm talking about music. Um, that's from Luana. Luana, she gave me my life. Music is what saved my life. I don't even want to go into how many times. So, Grandma, I love you. I'm going to miss you. And thank you for always being there. That's all I got. Thank you, Ryan.
right, I'm gonna I'm gonna be the mic. Uh, uh, the word I'm thinking of is Japanese. I can't think of it. Anyway. MC. The MC. Yeah, the mic Cho. So anyone who feels uh, that they would like to come and make a comment, please come on up now. knows me knows they don't like to get up in front of people. I like to talk, but I don't like to get up in front of people, but I just wanted to say my mom was the most kindest, generous person I I knew, and she was a good example. Um, even when we didn't have a lot, she still took people in. You know, we housed many people, fed them with whatever we had, and she did her best, and she did a good job. She's got good kids. We're all still alive, and we learn from her example. No criminal records. No criminal <laughs> We, you know, she was just a good example of how to think outside of yourself and embrace people no matter what or who they were and just take care of them. Um, I used to say our house was the first crisis center, you know, and um, a lot of her extended friends have already passed, but they couldn't have gotten through their worst time without her opening her home and I think we all learned from that and it made us better people sometimes I would wonder why you know why are we doing this but um, you know I know now I know now and she was a good soul didn't speak harshly of anyone and was a good friend to so many people and I just loved her she was a good example and she made us who we are today and I know we will, every country song we hear will remember little bits of mom and her singing and her generosity and what a good person she was. And I will deeply miss her. That's all I got <laughs> for now. Thank you. got no COVID. This is my little sister. We moved to Canab when I was in the fourth grade. <clears throat> she was in the third grade. We slept in a little lean to in the back of the house. Cold in the winter time. We were well accepted by the kids that we can have. She and I would <coughs> sing at almost everything that came along. I'm going to miss her. Karen, I love you so much. <coughs> I love both your families. I guess that's about all I have to say. <coughs> something that 
my daughter Kira uh, sent and uh, to show this picture that she drew um, of Aunt Luana. We have one for Roy Carol. <coughs> Excuse me. We have one for each of her children. Sorry. And I wanted to read this uh, message that she sent with it. Dear cousins, during this time of mourning, I offer my condolences and heartfelt thoughts and prayers. To lose someone so close and well-loved is the greatest uh, difficult of our mortal lives. How grateful we are to know that because of our Savior, we will be with our loved ones again someday. My memories of Aunt Luana are limited but vibrant. I remember her singing alongside Aunt Karen and my Grandpa Gary. <clears throat> taking us back to a simpler time with those old country songs. She had a beautiful voice, and I'm grateful that she was willing to share it. It certainly made an impact on me, as I'm sure it did on all of you. Memories of those dark nights around the campfire in Hatch, with singing, laughing, and sharing of some of my favorites. Those songs encouraged comfort and unity in our family. I'm grateful to hear, <clears throat> sorry, I'm grateful to her and to all of you for giving me those beautiful experiences. After learning of her passing, I felt inspired to draw her portrait. And though I'm not a professional, I do hope that her captured likeness brings you comfort. I could not be there in person to offer support, but I knew I could share my talent just like Aunt Luana shared hers. I love you all deeply, and I pray you find comfort and peace. Sincerely, Kira Cox Gardner. Um, sometimes our kids do things that inspire us and make us think of the importance of the love that we have for one another. And I know that Aunt Luana is and always will be that aunt to me that was always willing to give me a hug. She'd always sense when there was something bu bugging me. And I just, I love her dearly. I'm so grateful for her life, for her example. She's a wonderful woman and uh, she will always be in my heart. Thank you. Most of you don't know me, but me and Luana, just after they got married, uh, Dave came to work for me when we were down in St. George <coughs> working at a gold mine. And uh, I enjoyed Luana's presence. She tried to tame me, but I don't know if it always happened. <laughs> but uh, I did really enjoy him. They were good workers, and I really loved them. And I hope you'll all take Luana's faith with you and endure to the end. And I say this, amen. Uh, you've got all the streaming stuff and, or the recording stuff. I don't know if you could move it without. Yeah. 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 I'm okay. Kind of. <laughs> important my sister was to me. The day my husband died, she moved in with me and I've been there. She's been there ever since. Till right at the last. And, and I do miss her. So, 
she's the only sister I've got. <laughs> Luckily I got her wonderful kids too and grandkids and everyone to help me through all this. And I do love all of you. So we went and chatted with her. She made sure to scold us that we were a day late, but we weren't. <laughs> we were there on her birthday, but she said it was the day before. So she made sure to tell us that we were a day late coming to see her for her birthday. She still had her spunky personality and I mean, it was, I'm so glad that we went to see her then because we didn't get a chance to see her again. But it was a great experience. Michael and got to go see her as well and give her hugs and tell her how much we loved her and tell her happy birthday. And I know she felt that because I could see it on her face. I knew that she, she knew that she loved us even though she didn't know who we were, but she knew. And I was grateful to have that time with her and that my kids could have that time with her as well. So we're gonna miss her and we love her very much. Okay, I don't know if I can do this, but I know if I didn't come that I would regret it, so um, anyone that knows me knows that I'm a daddy's girl, like, through and through. Um, and I wouldn't have him without my grandma. And My grandma was just such a beautiful and amazing and kind lady and she always, I'm thinking back there, she always had a smile on her face, no matter what. I never saw her in a bad mood, um, upset, she always was just happy. And, um, I don't know, I just have all these things going through my brain and it just feels like when I'm thinking back that I feel like in a way she connected me to my husband because he grew up singing songs with his dad that my grandma sang to us at the reunion and I just feel like she, it, she had a hand in that and I don't know I just love my grandma so much and I was so sad to hear of her passing because I wasn't ready for it and I wasn't expecting it and you always just think you have a little more time, but you don't. But I'm gonna miss her so much, and I loved her so much. I'm so thankful that she gave us this family because being raised in this family has been amazing and we're always been really close-knit and we always do everything together and I know sometimes it drives my husband crazy because <laughs> he he grew up not doing I mean a lot of family things 
but we do everything together and he always teases me and says oh what is it so-and-so's birthday you know like <laughs> penny down the street do we need to go to her birthday party he always just teases me about it but i know it's all because of vivian and grandma loana and how close we are and i'm so thankful to be raised in this family and that i got to have her as a grandma <laughs> Yeah, because she was, she was, she was just the sweetest thing, and yeah, at the end, she didn't remember who we were, but yeah, she did know that she loved us, like I said, she always was smiling, she never, she never, you know, acted like she didn't know that we were there for her, or that she didn't know who we were necessarily but she knew that she loved us like ryan and kaja said she knew that she loved us and she'd always make sure to give us a hug and i really am gonna miss that <sighs> thank you Well, Kenzie mentioned never seeing Grandma in a bad mood, so I gotta mention the time she was. <laughs> I don't remember um, if it was when Mom and Dad went on the cruise or somewhere, but Grandma was babysitting us in Reno, and she made us hamburgers. And I brought this up to her many times over the years, but she was hamburgers, and I was not a fan of hamburgers at the time. And she's like, you sit at you sit at the table until you finish that hamburger. And I was like, I don't like it. <laughs> and then when she went to put Kenzie to bed, I think, I tried to sneak the hamburger in the trash. <laughs> and then I was sitting on the couch, and then she comes over, turns the TV off, holding the hamburger. <laughs> and she's like, you go to bed. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I tell you what, though, I didn't eat hamburgers for a long time <laughs> but I eat hamburgers now and I eat all of it I don't waste the hamburger at all now <laughs> but uh, there is there is another time I want to mention not when she's in a bad mood but um, um, most of you know I haven't had the greatest relationships and um, I started dating Bryce who unfortunately couldn't be here he was feeling sick so he couldn't make it but um i started dating bryce and then about nine months later uh, we were pregnant <laughs> and um we came to visit and tell my parents and my family about it and my grandma was there and um we didn't get the opportunity to tell her when she was visiting like at, at the house because there's just a whole lot of talking going on you know you know my dad <laughs> but we followed her out to the car we helped her to her car and i'm like grandma i'm like i'm pregnant and she's she had the biggest smile on her face she's she looks at Bryce and she's like i know that you were the one that could make her happy she's like i knew it i had the feeling when i met you that you were the man that can that will love her forever and not just you know just like you for a little while <laughs> but she's like i knew it i knew it i knew that he was the one that would make you happy and then and then kellen was born and then um i took it upon myself <laughs> that that um the next year on thanksgiving when grandma was there i took it upon myself to propose to bryce because <laughs> i was like i'm I'm like, we got a kid, I'm not waiting, I'm not waiting for you, I don't know, she's not gonna plan or anything. <laughs> so I took it upon myself, and my grandma said how wonderful, how wonderful it was, and how happy she was, and, and she told me that, she's like, you're a strong woman, because not many women are, are gonna take initiative and propose. And I'm like, I'm like, guess what, I take it after you, because you're the strongest woman I know. Like, she was such a strong woman. And I, I definitely got that from her. She's, well, and my mom. My mom's a strong woman, too. She's a really strong woman, huh? Uh. <laughs> but, but my, my grandma just knew. She, 
she just knew that it was the that was the time that I was able to be happy and and she knew that she knew that having having my wonderful little child over there is gonna be one of the happiest times of my life and it has it has and and she loves she loves us and she would she would always told us that she didn't remember his tone for a while but she remembered me for a little while and she would always ask oh what's his what's his name and I was like it's Kellen and she's like oh my goodness he is the cutest he looks just like you and I love you so much and I'm like I love you so much too so yeah, a, a little, little light and then a little love, so thank you. <laughs> Can't be the only sister not to come. <laughs>
proved them wrong and she just was an amazing woman who did so much um, and I she, she passed that on whether she knew it or not or she meant to or not to all her kids and I think to, to me and my sister and I'm, I'm just really grateful for the person she was because this made everyone in the family better and stronger and making our lives better because we know how to be better people. So I want to thank her for that. And yeah, that's, that's all I got. Sister, we like to talk a lot, a lot. <laughs> People are shaking hands, <laughs> but it's it, I get nervous in front of everyone. <laughs> but, what, but I, <laughs> but I want to tell mom, hello mom, and I love you because that is how. We greeted her each time we went to visit at the assisted living. And the minute we said, hello, mom, she just lit up and she knew, even if she couldn't remember our names, she knew we were hers. And when we left, it was always, I love you and lots of kisses. But she loved everyone. And even the, the people at assisted living, knew how much she loved them. She told everyone that left, I love you. And I know how much she loved every one of us, her kids, her grandkids, her great grandkids. She would ask us to remind her of their names. She knew she had them all, but she, we were lucky if she remembered our name when we went to visit. But she always, always had the biggest smile on her face when she saw someone come in and she liked to sit out in the day room and I think it was because she was waiting for someone she knew someone was going to come and visit and every time she heard that um, when you walk down the floor it creaked quite a bit and she knew someone was coming to visit but I also want to let my Aunt Karen, her sister, know how much we love her and allowing her to live with her for nine years. They had a really good relationship and we're thankful for your love that you had for her. And also all the many family reunions we had. She loved everyone and I too will miss those singing around the campfires and her beautiful voice. But there's plenty of kids here to take on, besides Ryan, to continue that legacy. And I hope I get to hear some of um, those famous songs that we're used to hearing around the campfire. Anyway, Mom, I love you, and I'm going to miss you. She remembered Mike, but not really. She didn't know who I was. And I told her that I was married to him, her son. But because Mike looks very similar to his father, 
um, she gave me a look to kill. <laughs> she thought I was married to her husband, Roy Sr. So from that point on, you know, but every time we'd go in there, she'd be sitting in the um, little common area, and I'd wave at her, and you know, I'd be going back and forth with my mom, and um, the dub on the casting mic. Um, and the one time I walked by and I said, hi, hi, and she waved, smiling always, and then she, um, and then, four. Um, and then I walked by a little bit later, and it was like right before dinner, and, and I Mom. looked at her, she goes, good morning, I'm like, good morning, <laughs> um, and then it was the Sunday, right before she passed, she passed Monday morning, we had gone to see both our moms, and I was in visiting my mom, and Mike had come in, and don't take this the wrong way, but he go, he comes in and goes, I was just sitting with my mom, and she was watching Spongebob. <laughs> and it was just like, you know, just that's what she would do. So, um, yeah, that's it. But towards the end, I'm not sure I was a big fan. Uh, she didn't care for me too much, so. Because <laughs> I'm married to her husband. <laughs> I just want to say a few words. Um, um, when Juana arrived at um, the assisted living where I work, I saw her every day, you know, breakfast, br breakfast, lunch, and so, uh, and I always, you know, made sure, you know, I said hi to her and stuff like that, and gave her a hug and stuff. But then the la um, the 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 one, the last couple days, um, um, when I found out that she had passed away, because I was visiting my mama up in North Dakota. Um, Roy gave me a call, and then when I came back to work on Tuesday, some of the CNAs were saying, um, "Boy, your your um, your mother-in-law can play a, a mean um, game of um, cornhole." And she she played cornhole on Saturday, and then she was you know she was holding on to, and then she would just try to throw it really really hard, and and if she if she couldn't get it in the hole, she was really upset. And she loved to play cornhole. And then she, you know, then we have all different kind of activities also. We, she liked to kind of play bingo. And then were, when it was music time, she was always there because she always liked to, uh, you know, listen to music. And then some of the, um, the oh, um, if there was an old timer that was um, that came in and sang for an hour, <coughs> they sang all the old songs, and she would just sing along with them all the time. And She always had a smile on her face when, when she was singing and uh, she was having a great time of it. But sometimes she would always, she has to always sit in her room and she'd sit by the window and there's a little end table right there. And she'd always look out the window waiting for something to come and see her. And she always tried to escape. <laughs> <laughs> and so, 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 the, so then we had like you know, like a little camera making sure that she wouldn't go out the front door because we had a, um, a courtyard in the back and she would go out the courtyard and she would go around the building and come around the front and she would get and she tried to get into a car one time because she wanted to leave a few times and so that so we had to stop that because we didn't want you know to get hurt and um, but um, she would always. Sit there and wait for people to come in the door and then say to her the end. You know, she. Do it like, like Carol came and said she always did the same and she always wanted to watch the TV. So she didn't want to be in the room by herself. So she wanted to be around people. She always wanted to visit us all the time. So Carol and Lynn and Mike and Roy would always come to see her. And so that was the highlight of her day each day. We'll miss her. Every time I 
go to work, I see her room in a bed. Uh, yeah. Anyways, one of the CNAs when I came back to work, she she said that Saturday they played cornhole, and then Sunday was church, and she attended church, and then she usually sits in one of the chairs right there uh, on the side, and then she turned her head and saw a really nice, good-looking young man, and she w and she goes. I want to sit by him. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the one, this is the chair that you like to sit in. No, I want to sit by him. <laughs> and so, so she was adamant. And so they, so she got, you know, so the CNAs helped her with her walker. And she, because there was an empty <coughs> chair, and she wanted to sit by that guy. And she didn't know who he was. It was from one of the wards that come in each month, you know. And then they, they do the little sacrament, and then do, do, a, do a talk. And so she wanted to sit by that little that guy and he was a young guy and and sure enough and this and um they were, they were telling me about that and I, I just cracked up and go yeah i could see luana doing that <laughs> she wanted to sit by the young guys but anyways but then then, then when i got the call on uh, when i was in north Dakota, she said she passed i was totally shocked because she was you know playing cornhole on saturday and attending church on sunday and but it was her time, and she she probably knew that it was her time to go, and and we'll truly miss her. And I, and every time I come to work, I always look at room number two and and say, I love you. I'm glad that I've known you, and I'm glad that that I've married into this family. I'm thankful that that she was a part of our life, and we'll always remember you. And through song or just thoughts that you know that come to her mind that she's you know um talked to us and like 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 i said all the the kids always we always you know we went there and, and she just always gave us a hug and i love you i love you and and she didn't want us to leave she wanted us to you know to stay there all the time and, you know but i love you one and O Lord, pour out thy spirit upon thy servant, that he may do this work with holiness of heart. Father, you've taught us that this life is a time to prepare to meet you, and your daughter has lived a life in preparation for being received back into your glorious heavenly realm. In the scriptures, she learned that if she forsakes her sins and comes unto thee and calls on thy name and obeys thy voice and keepeth thy commandments, that she shall see thy face and know that thou exists. She knows, and we know, that she is. She has fulfilled her mortal experience in a fabulous way and that she put her life in jeopardy to create life and that the majority of those that are assembled here a result of the courage and the strength of thy daughter to face the trials of her life, the trials of her childhood, and to triumph, to never be limited
and to always look to the heavens knowing that she had the potential to become a great person and thy glorious plan for all of thy children that have come to this earth that are experiencing this mortal experience. Father, with her life, her mortal life being over, we praise thee and thank thee for thy mercy in receiving her in the manner that thou did her spirit back into heavenly the heavenly realm. And at this time, acknowledging that thou has established laws and commandments, and that the, this was established before the foundation of this earth upon which we are living, and that when we we, are, we have a promise from thee that when we obtain any blessing from thee, it is by obedience and to the laws and the commandments thou hast set upon this earth and the inhabitants, thy children, thy spirit beings that thou hast sent here to take on mortality. And the scriptures teach, Father, that thy authority resides within these laws and commandments and when we submit to thy will and obey thy commandments we all, we shall receive the blessings associated therewith at this time i request of thee that thou would hallow and make sacred this burial plot as the resting place of, of the mortal remains of thy daughter, Lawana Cox Coburn, Moore Coburn. And that thou would protect this, this place as Lawana, thy daughter, awaits with great desire the atonement that has been wrought through the atonement of thy son for the resurrection of the body with the spirit and that she will receive that glorious blessing in the end for having come through this mortal trial in the manner of which she has with great faith and with great devotion to thee great obedience to thy word and thy commandments she has taught her her family. She has left, left a legacy of faith with her family. And this ordinance I perform, Father, by virtue of the name of the Holy One, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ, in whose name the elements of the earth obey, the mountains move, the rivers change their course, and even time stands still at this sacred name. Yes, I do. In his name. Amen. Amen. I guess I have to say something else. So that will conclude the services for our beautiful mother, sister, grandmother. Oh, okay, let's have the flower girls come on up. And, uh, and then those uh, with boot mirrors, I believe we can place. They're on the program, so Krista, Laura, oh, Jordan. Aaron Jordan, I can't see in the sun. Kasia, Thank you, everyone, Aubrey, uh, for supporting Luana's family here, for coming from so uh, far away and sacrificing. Uh,
be here with us. And, uh, we do love you all. We truly do. Life is a trial. Um, hopefully, we, uh, we can always uh, have the spirit of reconciliation in our hearts and overcome all matters that, uh, that would divide us in our path in this, in this journey of mortality. This will conclude the services. Um, the immediate family, uh, if you would stick around um, shortly, and then we have uh, a lunch arrangement right down here in the area. So thank you, everyone. Kristen, will you start the girls going? Me? Yeah. Make sure that they all have one. I think they have.